नमस्ते इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट रोबस्ट स्केलर ना रोबस्ट स्केलर इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम स्टैंडर्ड स्केलर इन द सेंस दैट इट सब्ट्रैक्ट द मीडियन एंड नॉट द मीन ना इफ आई चेक स्टैंडर्ड स्केलर बिफोर वी वर सब्ट्रैक्टिंग द मीन फ्रॉम ईच ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड डिवाइडिंग इट बाय द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन राइट जस्ट कीप दिस इन माइंड ना वेन वी यूज रोबस्ट स्केलर वॉट वी डू इज वी विल सब्ट्रैक्ट बाय द मीडियन and we will divide it by the interquantile range now what is interquantile range it is the difference between the 75th quantile and the 25th quantile now what do i mean when i say 75 percentile 75 percentile means 75 percent of the values lie in the first 75 percentile of the data okay and when i say 25 percentile it means that 25 percent of the data is present until that particular value hence it is generally considered to be robust to some marginal outliers and hence uh, it is a useful scalar to use when we have marginal outliers now for example if we uh, see this min max scalar we were subtracting maximum and minimum values so if the maximum outlier was 120 then our distribution would be completely disturbed but if we were using robust scalar here then we wouldn't look at the maximum value 120 or minimum value of 0 we would look at the 25th value 25th quantile and the 75th quantile so that would basically uh, force a model to not look at outliers and to just concentrate on to the bulk of the data okay so we will get a better distribution of the data this time also in the standard scalar if we check we were using the mean and the standard deviation so even this mean and standard deviation they are quite heavily affected by the presence of outliers and hence robust scalar is better than them in that sense now but also it is uh, to be noted that it does not but that it does not completely remove the outliers it will preserve those outliers but it will uh, reduce their impact a little bit so it could be used when either standard scalar norm in max scalar is appropriate due to the presence of outliers and it also does little to change the shape of the distribution of a particular feature so we'll look at this in in the plots now how does over scalar work as i said before it will subtract from each observation the median value and then it will divide that result by the 75th quantile and the 25th quantile difference so if i check this uh, value range then the median value is 14 the fourth value in ascending order or descending order 14 the 75th quantile means uh, if i now, now for the 25th quantile if i check then this is my zeroth quantile this is my 50th quantile which is the median so what is our 25th quantile it is a middle of those values so if i check uh, my middle value should be since i have two values in between so between 10 and 12 i should have my 25th quantile right so that is why my uh, 25th quantile will be 10 plus 12 by 2 which is 11 hence my 25th quantile is 11 similarly my 75th quantile will be exactly between 14 and 49 so the value should be between 18 and 23 so that value is 18 plus 23 by 2 which is 20.5 so this is my 75th quantile and 11 is my 25th quantile my median is 14 so for each value for example for 5 i'll do 5 minus 14 divided by 20.5 minus 11 i'll get minus 0.94 for this 14 if you want to cross verify we'll do 14 minus 14 which is 0 and so this value is correspondingly zero here so now the shape of the distribution as i said it doesn't really change the shape of the distribution now here of course it looks that the distribution has changed from this to this but if we just zoom into this blue color line then it will have a similar distribution to this as well within the value range of 0 to 14 or 15 but here from minus 2 to 2 it is a pretty it is the same curve basically So now we look at a practical implementation of robust scalar. So I have imported robust scalar here. So I'll execute this code. Then I'll execute this. Now I'll fetch my data set from Fetch California Housing from Scalar dot data sets. Then for x and y, I'll do the same thing as I have done before. I'll check my x dot head. It it has latitude and longitude as well, but I do not want them. So this is my y basically median house value for each particular block then my x dot i log so now so now i do not want since i do not want this latitude and longitude i'll remove them using this slicing then if i check x dot head 
it tells me that uh, it is running from median income until average occupancy now i'll plot all of these curves now instead of min max scalar i'll do robust scalar for each of the columns now if i check so you see the shape of the distribution is pretty similar even though the value range has shrunk from 0 to 16 from minus 2 to 5 uh, the distribution is almost the same and you see since there are outliers in the original distribution we have outliers in the output distribution as well similarly for house age we see the distribution is pretty similar for average rooms also it is pretty similar and for average bedroom similar population also similar but now value ranges between 0 and 35 so the value range has shrunk from 0 to 35000 so it is a little bit better now but average occupancy it is the same right even now now if i do my extreme y train now instead of min max scalar if i check robust scalar now if i check my robust scalar it tells me that whether i want with centering true and with scaling equal to 2 so with centering means whether i want to subtract the median value from each observation and with scaling implies whether i want to scale the values from the interquantile range okay so now i can also change this interquantile range from 25 75 to maybe 30 70 or 20 80 it is my choice but i'll just keep this the default values so now after changing this pipeline value to robust scalar now we'll first check out our accuracy on after scaling uh, our data using robust scalar on k nearest neighbors regressor which is a linear model we get an accuracy of 63.93% and on unscaled data we get an accuracy of 17% which is you see there's a stark difference here as well so scaling is really important for uh, linear models now if i check out for my tree based models i get an accuracy of 66.87% and on my unscaled data we get an accuracy of 66.87% so it is almost the same value so you see again robust scaling or any kind of scaling doesn't really have any kind of effect on tree based models but it does have a huge effect on models which rely on distances or gradient descent etc okay so this was all about robust scalar i hope you understood from this lecture and i hope to see in the next lecture where we will be looking at max abs scalar or maximum absolute scalar so thank you for watching